Hey everyone, this is my second video about OSBF transit capability. Um, if you didn't watch part one, I will put it in the description below. I think it's a pretty good video to describe what OSBF transit capability is and why it's there. Um, in this video, it's going to be pretty short, but I just wanted to show you why it's important to know how to use it for uh, traffic engineering in the context of the CCIU lab exam. Uh, I'll be honest with you, this design that I have set up, you would not use in the real world. So don't come to this video expecting a real world scenario. This is specifically in the context of the CCIE lab exam. and We have some weird problem we need to solve. And that problem is we have these two areas, area 34 and area 67. And you can see neither of them are directly connected to area zero. So we know that we need virtual links. And I do already have those set up. So here from router three, there is a virtual link to router one, virtual link. And then router one also has a virtual link to router six. This will allow these two loopbacks to talk to each other. And we can verify that by going to router seven and let's ping Four's loop back from the source of ours, and it works. Now let's trace it to see the path that it's taking. And if you remember how the transit capability works, we should realize that it's just gonna go directly from six. So let me get the pen back. It's gonna go directly from six to three, down to four. Because we're again, we're using the shortest path. We don't need to use the virtual links path in order to do that. That's the, the key with the transit capability. Now, let's say on the CCIE lab exam, they give us this problem where they say, we don't want the traffic to go this way between the two loopbacks. Instead, we want all the traffic from these two loopbacks to pass through router one and go this way. Um, they also are telling us that we can't use OSBF interface commands, we can't change the cost, we're not allowed to use tunneling, um, no PVR, and we also can't change OSBF areas, which seems oddly specific, but this is kind of the stuff that we need to prepare for when we're preparing for the CCIE lab exam. So, since we know this video is about OSBF transit capability, that's what we're gonna do. So let's take from router six perspective, because remember with transit capability, this is something we have to configure on the ABR. So router six, we go into OSBF, no capability transit, end. So now let's go to router seven and let's do that same trace. And now you can see we have the desired path. We're going from six to five to one, to two to three to four. And again, the reason why this is happening is because without capability transit, the traffic has to use the virtual links path, which goes to area zero. So um, the virtual link that goes from six to one, excuse me. Now, the other direction, which router three still has capability transit enabled, from router four's perspective, we're gonna trace to 7.7.7. .7. It's taking the direct path. So again, on the ABR, router OSB up one, no capability transit. We'll do the trace and now we're going through one. So again, you might be thinking this is an oddly specific, not oddly specific, but this is a very specific use case. Does it really matter that much? And I would argue, yes, it does. Um, this is something that we're gonna wanna prepare for situations like this, where on the CCIE lab exam, they tell you to solve a problem, but they tell you you can't use the top five, you know, ways you would normally solve that problem. So you need to be able to reach in your bag of tricks and say, oh, there actually is a command I could use to solve this problem. And in this case, it's capability transit. Now it's possible that on your CCIE lab exam, you never see anything that you would require configuring capability transit, but 
you know, it's something to have in your back pocket. It's just another little feature that I think is useful. And it also teaches you, you know, a lot about how virtual links work and a lot about how OSBF works. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. This is kind of a short video um, and a short little lab, but I think it's good to at least see how we can use the capability transit feature, um, or, or I should say how we could not use the capability trans transit feature because we disabled it to solve the problem. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.